I want to start that video to extend massive thanks to Joseph Olivia and Itzai Bravi for supporting my channel and my videos. You guys don't have an idea how much that means to me and how grateful I am and how that keeps me motivated for building better and better content. What I've decided pretty much is to take that money and buy an SSD, a huge one, which allows me to have a dedicated lab, create Active Directory, combine different PCs, change different things, and then create better and better content on the channel. If you want to support my channel as well, you can do it by buying me a coffee, sending Bitcoin or whatever you like. I appreciate all of you guys. So let's get back to the video now. All right, guys, it's Elsek back. And as mentioned in a comment of my previous fake logo on screen video, we have a better way of doing things and actually saves time. Even though that's better than saves time, I think that it was nice to see how we can manually split files. And I'm sure that if you have that fundamental knowledge, you can upgrade from there on. But now we can do the, just that. We're going to use the fake Quogon screen again. Then we're going to run that through thread check. And what thread check is, is essentially a wrap up around Windows Defender that can scan a file. And if it's detected and triggered, it can say, say on which offset exactly the trigger happened which saves time and you can avoid all the manual splitting as we did in the previous video but you know the more you know so uh let's just get and download that so and navigate to thread check then that the first survey of course that's going to be in the description of the video so we don't have to manually search it now let's just download that with git so I'm going to use my desktop, of course, why not? You can see it's been cleaned up, but why not stick it up all over again? So see desktop and then git pwn and paste the IP. Now we have uh, a way of doing that. We, we can import that with Visual Studio and then compile it and then we are good to go. So we're going to ju uh, do just that. I'm sure that there are releases of ThreadCheck, which has the pre-compiled binary itself attached to the project, but I think that compiling is going to be the better way. So let's just do that. It's been downloaded. So I'm going to do explore and open the desktop. Now go to thread check and now here and open that with Visual Studio. It should take some time, but overall it's not that bad. So while well, that has been loading, I'm, I can download fake work on screen again because I'm not sure exactly where that is now. I'm sure I moved it somewhere, but I'm not sure where that is now. <laughs> so, so I'm going to do git clone and paste that. Now we can, of course, use the pre-compiled binary. So I think it's better to just download that instead of cloning the repository. So uh, allow downloads and then come on, let's just open downwards and then all right so we have it as a zip file there which is nice so fake work on screen i can copy that actually both of the things extract to my desktop we're good to go now let's look in the visual studio at the program.cs that's the main file of the with a thread check which of course it's a good idea to go through it and see how pretty much that's working how he's invoking the window the windows defender and so on so we have a bunch of errors here that needs to be cleaned up. If I were to build the solution right away, let's see what happens. I'm not sure if they are, uh, yeah, just temporary errors or we need to do, to do something, but in that case, we don't need to. So after compiling the Visual Studio how to uh, connect the thing and the errors magically disappear, which is nice. And now we just fix a little bit the release, debug to release, and then configuration manager, add it to be like 64 bit. Now close, now compile again, and now let's go to CD thread check, thread check, bin, again thread check, now bin now, and then x64 release, and here is the executable we need. So if we run to thread check.exe, we can perform that to file or URL. So we can host the file on the web server and then paste the URL there and it's going to get scanned anyway, so uh, that's nice. If we do dash H, we can see all the options of thread check. And in our case, we need dash F. Otherwise, file on disk. Then we can perform home directory and then desktop. And then fake logo on screen. And then where was it? Fake logo on screen.txz. All right, run that. Otherwise, in the file. 
and there we are so he identified the end of bad bytes at that specific offset and as you can see the the exact offset is the very bottom line of the check and that's the exactly what we did in the previous video but manually shrinking the file and scanning each piece of that and here we just pointed out to the exact point where the trigger happens so we can of course repeat the same procedure open the xxd go ahead actually let's do that uh come on Uh, let's open go to desktop then make work on screen and then we can simply just go ahead and do a copy of that and then paste here search for that or do it in uh, hex value can't find not sure why uh think I'm missing something so let's search the exact offset of the of the intrusion so we can copy that and then go here and paste that and can find not sure why so maybe do it like that and there we are so it pointed out to the exact offset and I'm not sure why that's different so here we have OOFO and then here is the different address we face there but the offset is being right so we are just to the exact same place we were last time so let's just perform a's here a a a a a and now save the file or save as actually save as another file which is going to be fake on screen patched that exe and then let's run try check again against that to see what's going to happen so patch and it occurred again but i'm not sure why because it it pointed to the exact same offset saying the things that we just changed so maybe we didn't save that correctly so maybe let me open up that offset again navigate to here and some for some way that's not being changed not sure why but never mind we're fine so i'm gonna save the file now and run the command again and no trace found. So in a nutshell, that, that's how you guys save time by seeing where the exact offset is. Of course, there are tools for the job, but don't me decided to do it manually. But you know, I I highly believe that you find the value in that video and I appreciate you for watching it. So thanks for watching once again, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. See ya.